Welcome to Missing Chronicles, where we delve into the heartbreaking and enigmatic mysteries surrounding disappearances. Here, we will immerse ourselves in the world of unsolved cases, thrilling search efforts, and intricate journeys. The goal of this channel is to spread awareness, foster community connections, and provide support to the families and loved ones of the missing. Join me as we embark on a suspenseful journey, hoping to uncover the truth behind these missing chronicles. Help us sustain and grow Missing Chronicles by becoming a patron on Patreon. Your contribution ensures that we can continue our investigations, share compelling stories, and work towards a world where no one is forgotten. Join us in making a lasting impact today. Susie's Disappearance, Unraveling the Mystery at Collins Circle, Suzanne Lyle, known affectionately as Susie by her friends, family, and colleagues, was an incredibly intelligent, thoughtful, and compassionate individual. Her passion for technology and computer science, however, was abruptly interrupted when she inexplicably vanished in March 1998, leaving everyone who knew her, both in person and through the internet, searching for answers amidst a sea of uncertain evidence. Over the past two decades, both amateur sleuths and professional investigators have tirelessly pursued the case, examining every possible lead and scrutinizing any trace of evidence. Unfortunately, these efforts have yielded more headaches than answers. Leaving the mystery of Susie's disappearance wide open for anyone willing to tackle it. In an attempt to shed light on the situation through observable evidence and situational analysis, this is an examination of Suzanne Lyle's vanishing and the enigmatic events surrounding the Collins Circle case, presented as a detective investigation. Suzanne Lyle, born on April 6, 1978, in Saratoga Springs, New York, was the youngest of three siblings. Although her parents, Doug and Mary, had not planned for a third child, they welcomed Susie into their lives with open arms. Susie was a somewhat introverted but remarkably introspective young girl who preferred solitude over forming numerous social relationships during her school years. However, she possessed a deep understanding of human nature and expressed her passion through writing poetry in her notebooks. Her sensitivity and dedication transcended into the realm of science and technology, where she spent her days researching and building machines and gadgets from scratch. In high school, Susie discovered her love for computers and the vast world of the Internet. She formed virtual friendships with fellow tech enthusiasts on message boards and eventually joined a computer club at a local coffee shop. It was at one of these informal gatherings that she met her long-term boyfriend, Richard Condon, a fellow intellectual and computer whiz. Over the next few years, Susie and Richard grew close, even after he graduated from high school a couple of years ahead of her, Susie pursued her passion for computer science by enrolling in the State University of New York at Anianta in 1996. However, she found the coursework there to be too easy for her, as it did not challenge her intellectual capabilities. To further her studies, Susie transferred to the State University of New York at Albany, also known as SUNY Albany. Her parents believed that Susie's decision to transfer was influenced by her desire to be closer to Richard, who lived in the same area. They described Richard as mature for his age, although Mary had concerns about his controlling behavior in their relationship. Nevertheless, Susie remained independent and worked at various off-campus jobs, including a position at Babbage's Game Shop in Crossgates Mall, New York. As time passed through the winter of 1998, everything seemed normal for Susie and her family. Doug and Mary were content as empty nesters, proud to see their children achieving their goals and moving forward in life. Susie successfully balanced her classes, work, her relationship with Richard, and her unwavering passion for computers. However, in March 1998, an unexpected gloom descended upon Susie, her family, and her friends. Something unimaginable happened, Susie vanished without a trace, since that fateful day, investigators, both professional and amateur, have dedicated countless hours to unraveling the mystery of Susie's disappearance. The case has been scrutinized from every angle, with particular attention given to the ATM withdrawals that occurred after Susie was last seen. The fact that someone accessed Susie's account and withdrew money nearly 24 hours later remains a perplexing piece of the puzzle. Only Susie and Richard knew the PIN for the account, 
but it's possible that someone coerced Susie into revealing it. The location of the ATM withdrawal at a convenience store in Albany was unusual for Susie's typical routine. The CCTV footage from the store captured a suspicious figure, later dubbed the Nightman, who accessed the machine around the same time as Susie's account usage. However, the cameras did not cover the ATM directly, and the identity of the person using it remains unknown. This detail complicates the investigation, as it suggests that the user was aware of the ATM's limited surveillance and deliberately chose that location. Various theories have been proposed over the years, with Richard Condon becoming a focal point for many. Some speculated that he may have been involved due to his access to Susie's bank card and knowledge of her withdrawal patterns. However, Richard cooperated with investigators, provided an alibi for the night of Susie's disappearance, and maintained his innocence throughout the process. Other potential suspects were considered but ultimately cleared including individuals with criminal records or connections to similar cases in the area. Despite extensive searches and efforts, no significant leads or evidence have emerged in the past two decades. The only recent development was Mary Lyle's collaboration with local experts in underwater mapping, prompted by her unusual feelings while crossing the Crescent Bridge over the Mohawk River in 2016. Unfortunately, this endeavor did not yield any significant findings, when examining the case as a whole, it is challenging to reach a definitive conclusion. However, one theory stands out, the possibility that Susie was taken by someone she knew, someone anonymous even to her closest acquaintances. This hypothesis is supported by Susie's mention of feeling followed by an unknown figure and her mother's belief that Susie was seeing someone outside of her relationship with Richard. It is conceivable that Susie met someone online, possibly on anonymous message boards, and engaged in a secret relationship. This individual may have persuaded Susie to meet them, leading to her abduction or worse, the ATM withdrawals and the subsequent disappearance point to a carefully planned operation. The perpetrator likely strategized the use of an ATM with limited surveillance, hence the selection of the convenience store location. The fact that Susie herself made the withdrawals under duress suggests that she was still alive at that point. However, it is unclear what transpired afterward, as Susie never returned to campus, and her dormitory card was not used after March 2. The discovery of Susie's name tag in a parking lot near Collins Circle, although suspicious, raises more questions than answers. In conclusion, the case of Suzanne Lyle's disappearance remains shrouded in uncertainty and speculation. While it is impossible to definitively determine what happened to Susie, the theory of her abduction by someone she knew offers a plausible explanation. The mysterious circumstances surrounding the ATM withdrawals and the discovery of her name tag in an unrelated location add to the enigma. Until new evidence emerges. The search for Susie continues, and her story serves as a reminder to support efforts in solving missing persons cases and raising awareness. Susie was not just a symbol of a cold case, she was a vibrant individual with a promising future, and we should never forget that. Thank you for watching Missing Chronicles. We have explored captivating stories and searched for answers behind the vanished. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay updated with our latest videos. Share these videos to spread the message and assist affected families and loved ones. If you have any information related to the cases we've discussed, please leave them in the comments section. Together, we can make a difference. See you in the next Missing Chronicles.